This is part of my premium course, so if you like this video, be sure to check out UsefulLaravelPackages.com. Okay, let's take a look at PHP Insights. This package analyzes the code quality of your PHP projects. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to use it. So this works for PHP as well, but obviously we're going to be using Laravel here. So let's compose or require it. And I'm going to be using my Laravel e-commerce example from YouTube since there's already a lot of code written for this. Okay, and now let's publish the config. And then we can run this artisan command, PHP artisan insights, and this will analyze your code and give you a score for different categories. Okay, so you can see four categories here and some breakdowns in each of those categories. Now, if you press enter, then you'll see different rules for each category. So for example, these are code recommendations. So let's look at the first one here. So it's saying not to use public properties, which in the case of Laravel, a lot of things actually make use of public properties. So I'm not sure why this rule is enabled. For forbidden setter, it's saying make use of constructor injection, and there's some unused variables here, and so on and so forth. So if you press enter again, it will go to the next category, and there's only one here, and it's saying these classes have some cyclomatic complexity, which is a way of saying there's a lot of paths in your code. For example, if there's a lot of if statements, and if we continue, this one is for architecture. Again, more rules, which you can turn on and off, which, and I'll show you that in a second. And the last one is for style. And this mostly has to do with formatting of your code. Okay, so if you look at the config, you can turn on or off or configure some of these options. So if you go into config insights, you'll see the configuration for this package. And there is a preset that's already set to Laravel, but there are other options for other PHP projects. And here you can exclude a certain file or directory if you don't want that to be part of the insight. You can add rules if some are missing. You can remove rules and you can configure certain rules. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these in our project and see if we can either fix it or remove it. So let's start up here. So forbidden public property. Like I said, Laravel makes use of this. So I want that to turn that off. So if you go into the documentation, and if you scroll down to here are the four categories, code, architecture, complexity, and style. If you click on any of them, you'll have a huge list of rules which you can configure or turn off. So here's the one we're looking at, forbidden public property. So if you wanna turn that off, which I want to do, we'll just grab this and we'll just add it to the remove array right here. And then that should turn off. Let's turn something else off. Let's see what else we have here. So let's change this. It says the minimal length for a character has to be three. And I'm okay with using E for exception. So let's turn this one off. A limit name minimal length. So let's look for that. So it's right here. So we can actually configure this one. So if we grab this, if you look at this, we can add E to the allowed short names and that should take remove that rule. So let's go ahead and do that. So that we're not removing a rule here, we are configuring it. So we have to add it to the config array. So let's add that. And I'm gonna add E here and that should take care of that rule. Okay, and let's see if those two are gone. Oh, sorry, we have to add class here. Let's try that again. Okay, and now those two things should be gone. So uh, the forbidden public property should be gone, and it is. And the rule for having short variable names should be gone as well. And it is, cool. So let's see if we can fix a few more rules here. We have two unused variables in this checkout controller, charge and order. So let's open that up and let's look for that. So charge is one of them, so let's look for that. 
Okay, so it looks like I'm just using it here or defining it here, but not actually using it. So we can get rid of that. And for order, let's see where I'm using that. Okay, so I am using it here, but I am using it there as well. But I am not using it here, so we can get rid of that. So let's see if that cleared it up. Okay, and it seems to be gone. Let's take a look at the one that says we have too much cyclomatic complexity. So yeah, like I said, this just means you have a lot of if statements. So let's take a look at e-commerce install and see if we can do anything about that. Or at least we won't refactor it. I'll just show you that this will be removed if we get rid of some of the if statements. So let's see here. Yeah, I have a bunch of nested ifs here and this calls this method. So that makes sense that, and there's some if statements in here as well. So that makes sense that it would have somewhat of a high complexity. So if I just got rid of this entirely and just did this proceed, then it should get rid of that one error for this specific file. So let's try that again. So e-commerce install should be gone once I rerun this. Okay, so here it is not showing anymore. So yeah, we did get rid of that complexity, but I didn't fix it. Obviously, I just commented out the code, but I would have to find a way to make it less complex or to have less if statements here. So yeah, definitely check out this package and run the tools to see some options for cleaning up your code. And you can decide if you want to keep that or if you want to refactor your code. Definitely take a look at the different options we have here for code architecture, complexity, and style, and the rules associated with them.